welcome. I'm really glad you could join me today. I have been missing, at least from YouTube, for a period of time, and I wanted to fill you in a bit on what's going on and let you know that I'm not gone, but I hope I'm not forgotten. And I'm working very hard to try to get more videos up, but it has been lunacy here. I was very sick for several weeks, uh, dealing with several different things all at once. Um, I had uh, a reprisal of COVID, and that in itself wasn't so bad. It's more like just a cold, um, because I had I was vaccinated, so most of those symptoms were pretty okay. But then I got the flu on top of that. And on top of that, I had some other health stuff going on. And so it all sort of just piled up on me all at once and prevented me from doing much. Fortunately, I had someone that could help me because obviously with, when I had COVID and the flu, I couldn't make things or fill orders. I don't want to get my customers sick, right? So fortunately, I was able to point and... <laughs> show videos to someone else and get them to help me out for that short period of time. Now, everything is okay now as far as my health goes, but what I will tell you is that business has been crazy booming. What you see me working on here is one day of orders, and I think this day was 112 orders that I had to fill. And so I, what I did is I just I pulled everything for all the orders, or most of it, and had it here on my shipping table and actually set it all up in such a way where I could film it because I thought, you know what, I haven't done a video in a very long time, and so what can I do to get something out there to let people know that Patrick is still alive <laughs> and busy. And so that's what this video is. Now, this whole video isn't just me packing orders. Um, I'll be showing you some other things that I do here, uh, but it's all pretty much indoor stuff. Uh, it's been cold and rainy and wet, so not a lot of time spent outside other than just the necessities that I have to do, you know, with the animals, that sort of thing. Uh, I have watched a lot of movies <laughs> when you're not feeling well and you can't do very much. I had the energy of nothing. I was just uh, not wanting to do anything. I didn't want to go anywhere. I didn't want to, I wanted to just sleep and I did a lot of that. Um, I was sleeping like 16 hours a day, but I was, I had chills and stuff. I was just freezing, so I had to be under, I was under a quilt, blanket, I was in my flannel sheets, and then I had a big comforter over the top of that just to stay warm. It's not that my house was cold, it's that my body temperature was, I was, my, my temperature generally was around 102 to 103, and it was just miserable for that period of time. But uh, it felt so good to work on orders, to start pulling orders, doing this sort of thing, and not depending on someone else to do that, which I don't have that someone else anymore. That was a temporary thing. Uh, I am working on a more permanent solution, and I will fill you in more on that when I get it. Because I live so rurally, it's a little harder to find someone and find someone dependable. Uh, you know, I can't just hire a high school kid who has a life, you know, and be able to depend on them. And um, there, so a lot of the people that I'm reaching out to are retirees or similar people that will have the time and hopefully be more dependable. And I'm not saying that young people are not dependable. What I'm saying is they have very busy lives. So it can be tricky, especially with the time sensitive nature of the business that I have. So, and I do consider shipping the most important part of what I do. And I will tell you, it is the biggest part of what I do. And that's sort of one of the things I wanted to talk to you all about was, well, what success is in the soaping or 
home self-care business. So whether you're making lotions or creams or candles or any of the many things that we makers make, there are some things that you may not think about when you're striving for success in this particular business. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that. Um, a lot of what I do is prepping for orders, like lasering my boxes. I laser my spoons. I do my coasters. I do uh, every box. I try to every box that I ship out has my marketing on there. You know, it has the soapy oaks tree uh, and my logo on there. And that is just one little part of what's in a day. Okay, the, I will say shipping. I spend at least eight hours a day shipping. That is not an exaggeration. That is the truth. And that, that has nothing to do with the creating that I have to do, whether that's making new soaps, and that sort of thing, or making lotions, or um, matter of fact, we had to uh, shear sheep several weeks ago and uh, boil the uh, fleeces, which that's something else I'm working on, getting the fleeces listed in the shop. And we'll talk more about that again in future videos. There's so much I do want to do and so much I want to share with you all. And it's just a matter of me figuring out how to get the videos done. Uh, one of the things, too, that I wanted to talk about is safe shipping. Uh, I don't get breakages. Well, I'm not going to say I never, never get breakages. Yes, on occasion, something does break. Maybe there is a delivery person that has a bad day, and instead of kicking the dog, they kicked my box. I don't know. You know, things do break on occasion. But I try very hard to package things in such a way where they don't break. And that costs a little more to ship, you know, the supplies that I have to ship, the, uh, the paper that I roll the glass in, the paper that's used to, uh, as filler in the boxes, the boxes themselves, right? The, all of the things we do, the printing of our labels. Uh, this is time consuming. I hand pour every lip balm. Everyone is pour it individually, one at a time, and that's not because I'm too, uh, that I think I'm too good to use a flood tray. I use these paper, the craft board uh, lip tubes, the kind you have to push up instead of twist and turn, so they're a little bit of a hassle to use, I know sometimes, but it's a little less plastic in the world, but they don't make those flood trays for these yet, but I'm going to be making my own. So we'll talk more about that again in a future video. You're going to hear me say that a lot. But there is a lot that goes into a day. And I mentioned earlier making soap. Well, that in itself is, it can take, you know, it, for those of us that are very experienced at soap making, we can make a soap from the time we get our lye ready to get our oils ready. We can get it in the mold generally, you know, within an hour or so. And that's terrific. But like I said, when you have eight hours of shipping in the day, here's another hour, right? Then when your soap tends to thicken a little faster than you think it will, sometimes that can be a hassle and take a little longer to get things ready. This is a new uh, multi-loaf cutter that I got recently. And what you're looking at is me challenging uh, myself and trying to push it through and actually broke a wire using this. I love the concept of it and I spent a lot of money on it. It's stainless steel. It comes from across the other side of the world from a maker who made this and it does have some advantages, but I will say that I'm not 100% sold on it. It's very hard to it, you have to have a lot of strength just push it through it doesn't always cut the loaves as straight as I would like but it, you know it, we we test things we try things to improve to I did that to take a little time out of my day so it would cut a few seconds off cutting individual loaves that's why we have multiple multiple soap like this multiple bar cutters as well um, 
This is another day where I'm having to actually bag some of my soaps. And again, I had three, <coughs> pardon me, 300 bars, I think this day, to hand wrap and label. And it's all of these sort of things that you have to do in a day. So when I talk about, you have to think about what is included in being successful, well, to be successful, you have to be very busy. You have a lot of work to do. And I know a lot of people get into this kind of business to make a side income. And I did that myself, uh, did that as well. And now it's my only source of income. And I'm making a decent income off of it. But it means putting a lot of hours into it. And so you have to decide and find that balance. If you have children or you have other responsibilities like farm animals and things like that that you have to deal with, you have to consider how many hours are actually in a day. Uh, I would much rather have a 36-hour day than a 24-hour day, but that's not happening, right? Uh, so sleep sometimes is a luxury, but it's not, right? It's a requirement. We have to sleep. And I think that's one reason why my health, um, why I got sick and was a little degraded is because I wasn't sleeping as well as I should because I was spending all my hours doing this. So this is something that I wanted to talk to you all a bit about and get your input as well. One of the things that I have learned in life is that you have, at least at my age, I'll be 62 uh, on my birthday. I'm not ancient, but I'm certainly no spring chicken by any stretch. And one of the things that you'll figure out uh, as you get older is that your time becomes more valuable. Uh, when I was young, I wasted so much time. And, oh, I don't regret it because that's what your youth is for. It's for learning those things, right? But I now know that I love what I do. I do enjoy this. It is something that I will continue to do. And there's nothing I can do to slow it down because I don't advertise. I don't uh, market. I don't do social media other than my YouTube videos. I mean, I have an Instagram and I have a Twitter and I have, or is it X now? See, I can't keep up. I have these things, but I don't have the time in the day to actually work on those. Um, and the truth is, I don't enjoy it that much anyway. I like actually making, I like doing my videos, and that's really about the extent of creativity in regard to social media as I get. I, but what, anyway, where I'm going with this is if when you are soaping or you're a creator, and you're striving for success. I want you to know that uh, you have to be prepared for that success. Because I consider myself a very successful soaper. Um, I, I make, I mean, I make more just selling just the soaps, uh, the just the plain tallow soaps. I make more selling those both locally and wholesale and on my Etsy store. I make more doing that than I ever made in my nine to five job that I had, just the soaps alone, not to mention everything else. And I'm not one to brag. I'm not gonna say how much money I make because quite frankly, I find that crass and a bit, a little rude. Uh, and I'm not gonna, I don't, I'm not one to say, oh, look what I did, no, because I don't want to hear others do that, so I don't do that. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? Uh, but what I can say is you have to decide uh, how much money you want to make, but you also have to decide what you're willing to sacrifice for that, because it does take sacrifices. Uh, well, just in your home. Uh, you know, when you, my home is now more of a business than it is a home. I don't even have a guest room anymore. I've taken that over. I've taken over 
most of my uh, 2,600 square foot home is, well, the kitchen, it has nothing to do with the business, that's separate. And I have a den where my TV and stuff, that has nothing to do with the business and my bedroom. Those things are separate, but everything else, my what used to be my formal dining room, what used to be my living area or the great room, um, the guest room, the third bedroom are all uh, part of my business now. Uh, whether that be just the storage of my boxes and my jars and my bottles and those sort of things. Um, the All the different supplies that we have to have. I mean, just those little spoons right there. I order those in the thousands and so uh, that's that takes up space. And then the boxes alone take up an entire wall in my home, right? So these are all the sorts of things that you have to take into consideration or get a... Uh, you know, another building, which is something that I have been working on, but that's a little slower in the, just because I don't have the time. It takes time. All of these things take time. Just going and shopping and looking at things and talking to builders and all those sort of things, that's time consuming. I'm trying to buy a new vehicle because my car is not it's it's long in the tooth and I need a new vehicle. But even that is time consuming, just going on the website, looking at vehicles and figuring out what you want and all these sort of things. So, and this is all part of the reason I'm sharing all of this is that you have to figure out, you know, how successful you want to be because success uh, of business can be a detriment to your personal life. I don't have time to go see a movie. I don't, well, that's not true. I actually forced myself recently to go away one afternoon on the weekend and go see uh, Godzilla Minus One. Loved it. But anyway, well, that's another story. But you have to figure out, you know, what you want to sacrifice in regard to social life and entertainment and fun. Um, if you want the kind of success that you that you you think you want, right? Uh, for me, it wasn't a dollar amount. Okay, it was just I wanted to make enough to support myself, and I do that, and I do that very well. It allows me to buy new supplies, to buy like that uh, tape dispenser there. It's a couple hundred bucks, It's, uh, but that is something I would never spend money on. But it's a real time saver. It helps me reduce plastics. I'm using a paper tape now. Now, I will say that even that is not 100% perfect because it has little fiberglass threads through it, which make it stronger. So I've recently found one that doesn't have those. And But one, one step at a time, right? Um, but these things I do to please my customers, but also to make life easier. Uh, the reason I bought that multi uh, loaf cutter was to save time. It ultimately doesn't save that much time because it's not as functional as I wish that it were. Um, but I'll keep trying. And everything that I do, whether it be like I've bought tables, I got my shipping table, which I've got a new shipping table, which I haven't even put together yet, which will replace this stainless steel table that you see me using here. I've got several of these stainless steel tables scattered around my soap making table. I've got one where I just um, mix up my lotions and creams and things like that, adding scents and things like that. So I've got a lot of different spaces. I've got a candle making area, which is not in the works right now that's in the near future i've got my uh this area here where i do my infusions and things like that and this was actually something i'm using an apple press here to actually press out my fresh comfrey leaves or these were they were dry they were fresh when they were dried um, and then have infused them in olive oil and then i'm just putting them in the apple press just to get out every last bit of the oils. Um, this is a small expense for one of these presses, not very much, but it is for me a real money saver 
because you're getting out a lot more of your product. I, I just don't have the strength to squeeze out with my hands. And a lot of times the soil is hot anyway, so I really don't want to squeeze it and burn my hands with hot oil. Uh, so something like this is very beneficial for that, just for uh, you know, reserving every last drop that you can out of your uh, infusions. And I can't say enough about these apple presses for this purpose, and this because I've used this dozens and dozens of times successfully uh, for just this very purpose, and it has been a real benefit to my business. Uh, anyway, what I'm trying to say to you all is that you have helped me to be the success that I am in this in this regard. I'm very successful, uh, more successful than I could have ever imagined. And it makes me happy that yes, I can make a living making something. It never occurred to me in my life uh, that I would make something that other people would want. That's just not part of my, wasn't part of my ideal or dream. I really thought I would work for someone else for most of my life. And although I have worked for myself many times, uh, I thought in my later years that I would just find a position somewhere and do that until retirement and collect the gold watch. And <laughs> Which I don't think companies do that anymore. It's, I'm an old man, so I have memories of another time. But uh, that's no longer the case. So now... Uh, you have to make your own retirement. I have to make my own retirement. Um, so if I want a gold watch, I have to buy it myself. And uh, the truth is, you uh, will find that it can be very difficult when you first start. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't start, though. I had to start somewhere. I'm my very first video that I did uh, on YouTube, I remember thinking... This was the coolest thing ever. Wow, I can show someone else what I do. And I probably haven't even improved much in my video making skills since then because I haven't put as much effort into that uh, or money or I have tried to buy better lighting but I still don't have great lighting. And sometimes my videos come out looking like VHS from the 1980s and I have a much better camera than that. I don't know. It's just, I'm just not as proficient at video making as I wish that I were. When I'm doing something like this where the camera is stationary and I can just do this, it's fine. But yeah, it's a, it can be a, a challenge. But one of the things I have learned in this business, though, where I was going with all of this, one of the things that I've learned is that your repeat customers are the lifeblood of your business. Not gaining new customers, although that's great. I love getting new customers. And, you know, even doing a video like this, sometimes I will get a few new customers who go, oh, I saw your video and decided to check out your shop. That's great. But the fact is most of my income and success comes from people that buy over and over and over again. And I would love to show you my Etsy and show you all the repeat customers, but I haven't found a way to do that without showing the people's names. And I try to be very careful about that. Even working on these orders here, you'll notice I have the papers folded in such a way and the labels upside down so that not showing customers' names, I try to protect their privacy. Um, and one of the great things about uh, this kind of business is that you get to meet so many tremendous people, so many wonderful, wonderful people. I have made friends here, people that I consider friends, even though we may not chat very often, maybe we may not communicate as often as I have with friends in my earlier life. These are people I consider friends. Um, one of them is my friend, Kath. Uh, she and her husband, Ken, are in the UK, and I met her through this business. And uh, my friend, Nancy, 
I met through this business. And there's actually someone locally who actually purchased from me and I have met and become friends with she and her husband and their family. And you will find that that, that is the business that, or that is the keystone and the foundation to a successful business in this industry are your repeat customers. Because first of all, they give you good, they leave reviews. Reviews are good for when new customers come along, they can see, oh, this person has, I have over 6,000 five-star ratings, right? So people can see those. I started out with one, okay? So don't think that you can't do it because you can. Because when I make a purchase, for instance, on Etsy or other platforms, I do look at the feedback. Do I always, is that the most important thing? No, uh, but it's a part of it. I don't trust Amazon ratings as much as others, and this is no diss of Amazon, uh, but I know that certain businesses have been uh, chastised for uh, buying feedback, that sort of thing, and that's not cool, so it makes it a little harder to trust, you know, specific businesses. In addition, there are a lot of uh, international companies that have got involved. So, for instance, if you sell a widget on Amazon, before long there will be a hundred Chinese companies selling that same widget. Uh, so, those are things you have to take into consideration. That's one of the things I like about Etsy, because we're creating things that are individual, handmade, made one at a time, for one person at a time. It's a little harder for someone to come along. I'm not going to say someone else can't completely duplicate what I do. They can, or what someone else does. Um, might be a little harder to imitate one of the real fancy soapers. I, I certainly can imitate them. Uh, but my point is, it's not something that a lot of people want to do. This takes work and effort, which is sort of what the video is about, is that it takes a lot of work and a lot of time to do this stuff. And... You have to be ready for that because when you become successful, when you start uh, making these kind of sales, uh, for, first of all, you will find that you have to spend a lot more time uh, thinking about your creations, right? Maybe making 50 soaps, is, different types of soaps, is not beneficial. Uh, maybe just doing a couple really well is more up your alley, right? For me, that's the case. Doing a few things well, and I don't mean that to sound like I'm bragging. I just mean I know that I can do a good job at doing the things that I do do. And those things, doing a few things real well, um, can be successful. I'm proof of that. Oh, I just hit my mic. Sorry about that. And... I know a lot of other people have done the same thing, right? But uh, one of the things that I find, too, are communications. I'm terrible at, at communicating on YouTube, at responding to people's comments. And it's only because I'm busy responding to my Etsy customers. I probably get 30 or 40 messages a day uh, from customers. Various things. Hey, can you update my address? I don't live at that address that's on Etsy anymore. But I'm now at this address. Or, oh, I put unscented, but I really want lavender. Or I put rosemary, but I really want unscented. Or, oh, can I add a product to that sale that I just made? And then you have to explain to them that while we can't add to a sale that's completed, we can cancel the sale and they can start over and create a new one. Or they can just make a, an additional purchase and we can just credit them the shipping on the second item and combine it with the other one. You know, these are the kind of communications normally we all have to deal with on a daily basis. And you have to respond. You have to communicate with these customers because failing to do that is uh, probably the worst thing you can do for your business. Uh, because if you don't communicate, and Etsy actually punishes you for, or uh, 
but punishes you for not responding in a timely manner, which is good uh, in that regard because that is a big part of your success are clear communications. Now, one of the things that Etsy suggests you do is also respond to your feedbacks. And I haven't, I've tried that a few times, but by, between going in and responding to just customer questions and then going in too and saying, you know, if someone says, I love this product, it's hard for me to just go in and say, well, thank you, I appreciate that. Do I do that to the thousand other people who have said the same thing? It can be a little challenging. Uh, if they ever come up with a bot to do that, I would not be opposed to it, but that, I'm joking. I don't really want AI communicating with my customers, but that being said, it can be a challenge to get all of those things done, right? And I'm sharing all of this not to scare anyone, uh, it's to make you aware that the busier you get, the more work there is. Uh, and that's why some people just make their successes actually making the video itself. And that has not been beneficial for me. Um, I simply don't make much money off my YouTube videos. Oh, $100, $200 a month. I'm not going to say that's, uh, that's just pennies. Of course, we can all use that. But it's not my, certainly not any uh, part of my income that uh, I couldn't live without. So there's just not a lot of money in the, for me because I just don't have that many views uh, on a single video. And that's okay. It's just not where my money is now, there, or where my effort is. There are other people that make videos and they have thousands and thousands of views. And so they're making an income there, which supplements their business. So maybe they don't have to, hope, hopefully, don't have to work as hard at the other things, the creation, you know, the making things, right? It's, uh, it's what you want to do. It's what your desire is. Do, had you rather be a social media creator and make your money that way, or a product creator, right? And that is something even I struggled with early on. I've got a couple of videos that did go, I guess you could say viral. Um, I've got a couple that have a lot of views uh, from early on. Uh, I think one of them was my uh, prickly lettuce video and another one was, well, I don't recall really, right? I think it was the making of the glycerin soaps. Whichever it was, um, those really took off. And yes, I've made a lot of money off those couple of videos. Uh, but that was just a fluke. I didn't know when I made them that those would be the ones that just took off, right? And But if you have the kind of channel where you get that kind of uh, response on every video that you do, you don't have to work as hard at doing the other things at, at the business side of things because your your money is coming from the actual production of the video right so and if that's what you can do i say cash in on that uh, make that your uh make that your forte because it's not mine i like making videos i like doing these things and communicating with you all um, in many ways, this is the main communication that I have in my life. Um, I do have a, a house guest right now. Um, just this week, actually, I'm helping someone else who's sick, uh, helping take care of them. Yes, I know, right? Um, that's one more job. But that being said, um, that's what I like to do in my life. I like to, if I can help someone else, I want to do that. Um, but. That's actually ending this Friday, so I won't be doing that anymore. But I wanted to just share this with you all and let you know that there is uh, a way to move forward. One of the things, too, that I would like to share with you all is just a tip. I mentioned that our repeat customers are the most important part of our business. Give them a little something extra. Okay, so for instance, these little spoons that I hand laser and make in my coasters. The spoons cost me about two to three cents each. The 
Coasters, about 20 cents, maybe a little less. It depends on which supplier I get them from. You can get them on Amazon. They're a little more costly that way. But that being said, uh, they're a way of getting your brand out there. A uh, customer can use a coaster in their house. They can use a little spoon on their product. Even after the product is gone, they still have these things right. So it's a reminder of your business. It's very inexpensive to do this. Um, and you, of course, it's added into your price of doing business, right? But it also helps to develop brand loyalty, right? So if I'm using a coaster in my home, and I look down and I see a name and I'll remember that communication I had with um, Mary at this particular business or Bob at this particular business or you know, whatever the case may be. And it makes a difference, right? I, you know, it's like, you know, I haven't had any of that soap in a while. I think I'll go place an order. Am I using my imagination in this regard? <laughs> Perhaps a bit. Uh, maybe I'm giving it a bit more credit than it deserves, but nonetheless, I think my customers enjoy the little something, the little something extras. Um, my friend Keely over at Soy and Shea uh, does a little uh, ballpoint pens, which I have those as well, and I haven't added those to my giveaways yet, but that may be happening here in the near future. But the whole purpose of this sort of thing is just to create brand loyalty, to make your customer happy. Uh, and I like to give as much value as I can. And also it's kind of like opening a gift, right? I've had customers say that it's like opening a little presents to get these little somethings uh, extra in a package. And nothing makes me happier than giving a gift or Receiving one sometimes, too, is really cool. Uh, one of my customers bought me a uh, really, really nice uh, chain, and which I did appreciate it very much. It was a shock. Um, and I'm not asking for people to send me gifts. Please don't. Um, this was just something somebody did, and it was really nice. But I had another customer who bought me a really neat little bell that I put on my Christmas tree this year. These are the kind of things that, um, to me, just make me smile. I know gifts are something that customers appreciate because it's something I appreciate. Um, use fragile labels. When you're using, when you're selling things that are glass and very, very fragile, does the post office or the UPS treat them any differently when they see a fragile label? I don't know. Some people suggest that they just kick those a little higher. <laughs> I don't know that to be the case, but at least to let your customer know that you care, that you're telling those shipping companies to treat it like something fragile. And again, this goes back to customer loyalty. And that's one of the things I get really good feedback on from my customers is the way things are packaged. So Really, when I first started, I reused boxes that I got. Amazon boxes. I would usually turn them wrong side out, take them apart, hot glue them back together so it looked like a clean box. But I reused what I could, which is, I'm sure, what a lot of people do when they first start. But as time goes on and you realize, you know what, I'm going to have to buy boxes. Um, I don't get enough uh, other boxes in and they don't look as professional as I would like for them to look. Uh, now you may, you'll see right there over to the, on the right side near the coasters, you'll see my white gloves there. Those are cotton gloves. When I'm handling, when I first got all this stuff ready, my hands of course were freshly washed, cleaned my nails and all those sort of things. But for some products, I do use those cotton gloves to place my orders. Uh, or to package my orders, just to keep fingerprints to a minimum, that sort of thing. But all of these things you have to take into consideration. And I have, like I said, I get really great feedback from my customers on the way things are packaged. Uh, and I think that's because I have received packaging from other companies that did just a terrible job um, 
even Amazon packages. I received something recently. It was a big heavy item and it looked like someone wadded up a piece of paper, just threw it in the box on top of it. It served absolutely no purpose at all. It didn't do any cushioning. It did nothing, right? Um, so when we take our time and we hand package these things and make sure that uh, everything is safely put in there, again, that tells the customer that we care. And again, that creates this kind of brand loyalty. But back to my original comment about be prepared for success. Uh, I haven't always been prepared, and I am now. I Believe me, I, uh, I spend the time, which is what this video is showing you, is that I spend a lot of time now devoting my time just to individual tasks, like getting shipping done. And this particular day, um, well over a hundred orders. Uh, today alone, on the day that I'm actually recording this, which is today is on the 15th, yesterday was Valentine Day, but today I'm editing this video, it's on the 15th, and I have another 191 packages that I've been working on. I worked on all last night and yesterday and finishing up today. So things are going great. Um, and I wanted to share this with you all, but if for no other reason, just to let you know that success is available to you if you put the work in and you are prepared for success. And preparing for success means staying successful, if that's what you want. And again, that goes back to how you do your packaging, how you communicate with your customers, how you treat your repeat customers, um, uh, discounts, those sort of things. That is something too I will discuss in a future video, I hope. Um, and that is who, when to offer customers discounts, uh, sometimes to again, to help build customer loyalty and just to say thank you uh, for those customers that have been repeat customers. But, uh, you know, I have been remiss from doing videos. So, like I said, due to illness and some other things, I am, I do have other videos. I just have to edit them and try to get them up. Uh, but this was a long one, I know, and mostly because I just wanted to try to make up for the videos I haven't done to spend a little more time with you all. I know it's all over the place. I know I wasn't perhaps as clear uh, and I probably got off subject several times because that's just my way. I do that. But I did want to take the time to chat with you all, to share a little bit with you what a day in the life of Patrick is like, uh, a healthy, happy day that is and to spend a little time with you and just uh, tell you a bit about who I am and what's going on in my life. I will try to do an update to this video with some other tips and tricks that I have and things that I purchased, tools that I'm using. Um, I actually had someone ask me specifically, a couple of people asked me specifically about where did you get this? Where did you get that? Uh, where do you buy these? Or how did you do that? These are kind of things that I really should be devoting time to, and I will try to spend more time on that. Um, but again, that can be a bit challenging sometimes to get uh, all the videos done, right? Because that's, that's time consuming too. Not this. For instance, here I just set up a camera and just because I was doing one repetitive thing over and over again, so it wasn't as challenging. But I hope you enjoyed this, everyone. I really enjoyed spending this time with you all. I hope you do have a terrific week uh, or weekend ahead. And uh, leave any questions that you may have. I will try to respond to those. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, I hope you'll consider it. Leave a comment uh, and click that notification bell so that you will be aware when I do put out a new video. Thanks so much, everyone. It was great having you here with me today. I'm going to get back to the work that I have to get done today. I've spent almost 45 minutes just talking today to 
get this video done and that was a big chunk uh, out of this day so I'm gonna have to double up on my efforts but I want to thank you all so much and uh, I look forward to seeing you again and chatting with you again in my next video take care everyone and have a great day goodbye <music>